Welcome back to an all new season of the Grand Valley State Sports Report on WGVU. I'm your host Jake Levy. GVSU women's basketball took on Parkside for a two game road tilt on the road in Kenosha, Wisconsin, splitting against the Rangers. Head coach Mike Williams will join us today to talk about his team. GVSU men's basketball stayed at home for a two game series against Parkside, also splitting their games. Head coach Rick Wesley stopped by to give us a rundown on his squad. GBSU Swimming and Diving competed at Hope College over the weekend, with both the men's and women's team beating the competition. Assistant coach Eric Murray will join us to recap the meet on this episode. Rounding out the weekend, GBSU Track and Field hosted the Mike Lins Alumni Open in Allendale. Head coach Jerry Baltus checks in with us to recap the meet and preview the 2021 season. Lock it in, Laker Nation, as the Grand Valley State Sports Report returns right now. The Grand Valley State women's basketball team dropped their first contest of the season against Parkside 68 to 64 on Friday evening. They would bounce back on Saturday afternoon in a 77 to 54 win, setting the record at five and one overall on the season. Joining us now to recap the games is head coach Mike Williams and coach. Of course, this is different, just like everything's been this year than we usually do. Wish we could have you in studio, but great to at least see your face once again. Get some GVSU women's basketball back. How you doing? Hey, we're doing good. Uh, it's great to be back. You know, hear everybody's voices, see the faces from last year. We do the show, like you said, live. I uh, look forward to coming downtown, get my cup of coffee, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it doing Zoom. That's, that's all right. Yeah, a lot of new things, including a lot of new faces on your team. So you're six games in now, off to a terrific start, five and one. Tell us a little bit so far, to start off about what you've learned about your brand new team, basically. Well, I, I think um, we've learned if these kids can play with confidence, um, you know, we got, we got a chance to be pretty successful. You know, we've got, I think we've got some talent. Obviously, our upperclassmen haven't had a chance to play uh, a great deal of minutes, and our younger kids haven't played, but I think there's some talent there. I think they've been working extremely hard, um, you know, putting in time, you know, staying in shape, doing the right things. It's been tough, like you said, with all the COVID stuff. And, and I think this group is really coachable. You know, I think they're, you know, they're, their antennas are up, they're tuned in, um, you know, they want to get better. And I, and I think the last thing I'd say, I think they want to, I think they want to be a good team. I don't think it's about them. Um, you know, I think sometimes you get that where it's, you know, and, and again, and, and it, it's always kind of about you, I guess, but I think they really, um, you know, they really, made about the team, putting the team first, wanting the team to be successful. And, and I think that's why we are. Well, that's great to hear. I'm going to start talking about some individual players, so sorry to go in that direction. But you start with Emily Spitzley, who was the GLIAC Player of the Week on the opening week of the season. She scored 20 points in each of the games again for you this weekend, Coach. And I know she's had a lot put on her shoulders, especially coming back off the ACL injury and kind of getting thrust in the spotlight. But it seems like she's handled that really well. Well, she has. And, uh, you know, two things. You know, she's... Um, you know, staying in shape, staying conditioned, taking care of her body, she's done a tremendous job, you know, right from when the ACL um, happened last year until, you know, the rehab, staying with things, um, treatment, staying in shape, all the strength building, she's done a great job. And, and, and obviously she came back a little bit, but maybe quicker than we thought and probably stronger than we thought. So that's been a one area she's done a great job. And then the second thing, she came into us as a shooter um, and she'd become a scorer. You know, and, and I think that's been that's been fun to see. You talk about, you know, some of the players, the minutes they logged last year, well, or lack of minutes, and you see what they're doing this year, and um, it's just it's a credit to who they are um, as players. We tell our players we don't we don't make you good players. We, that's what coaches don't do that. You know, if they did, we'd have all good. You know, all players would improve and be great. And that we know that's not the case, but they make themselves player. And Emily has done that. 
Then you look at some of the other players that have had to step up in increased roles this year. Hannah Kula, Sammy Gerrels, uh, Brooke McKinley. And those three have really been put into starting roles as well. And they've all handled it very nicely. I mean, Hannah had two terrific games against Ash and had another nice game this weekend. Brooke, when she's hot from downtown, she's really tough to stop. And Sammy Gerrels, we know she's a two-sport athlete. We know she's athletic. But boy, oh boy, she's really been, had a chance to put it on display this year. You have to like what you've seen from your other upperclassmen as well. You know, they all, they all bring something different, and that's the that's the great thing about it. And what they've done with their leadership, their character, their work ethic, it just kind of rolled into being our starting lineup, and we're just kind of going with it. And, uh, you know, you, you, like you said, Hannah's kind of become a utility player. You know, she can kind of do everything. Brooke, I think, uh, you know, she's just a really a smart player out there. She kind of – she's always in control. You can't really rattle her. You know, obviously, you said – knockdown shooter when she's open we want to shoot the ball then and then Sammy's kind of that energizer bunny out there you know and just go, getting it all over the place you know I need, a, I need a rebound I need a loose ball I need you know just some energy she might come over and just smack you on the you know side of the head and say let's go because that's just kind of you know, you know who she is so um you know that group those those four players you know, those four juniors have been kind of hanging in there and paying their dues um have, have kind of done a great job for us this year Sammy's got no problem smacking me upside the head every once in a while if I need that too. But you've got some really exciting freshmen that have come in. Obviously, Quay Stanton, a transfer in from Northern Kentucky, has been fantastic to help you kind of give you that stable transfer to have that senior leadership. But then also, some of these freshmen that have come in, Coach, have been really, really fun to watch. And I know that's got to be exciting for you to see some freshmen jump in and make a play right away. And we specifically saw it again this weekend where we saw maybe game one, the starters did a little bulk of the scoring. But then in game two, the freshmen, that bench really took over. It seems like that's kind of your MO this year. Sometimes it's going to be the starters. It's going to be those returners. Sometimes it's going to be those new players that jump in. You can kind of get some offense from all over the place. Well, we kind of knew that going in. We told our players, don't be, you know, don't don't get comfortable where you're at because it, it can change in, in one possession. We might, you know, put someone in there. And hence we did, you know, uh, down at Parkside, you know, Jocelyn hasn't really played at all in, in four games. And all of a sudden we're down at Parkside. Seven minutes ago, we're down 12. And like, hey, Joss, let's go. You know, get in there. And, uh, you know, you kind of look at, uh, you know, you, same thing we got in there and all of a sudden we make a run and she scores a basket and all of a sudden they try to focus on her. It opens up the middle, we get some penetration and, you know, it's, it, it's what that, what that game kind of called for. And that's what our kids know, you know, Carrie Tmeyer, you know, uh, a senior for us, you know, jumps in there and, you know, gets, gets, you know, maybe a three to five minute stretch here and there and just does a tremendous job. And, um, it just, we got 13 players and you know what, 13 players could play. It's just, you know, game to game. And I think that's what's pretty cool about this team as well. It's so hard to recap six great games in six minutes, but coach are off to a great start. Five and one to start the year. Congratulations. We can't wait to talk to you more down the road. Glad to have basketball, baby. Glad to have you back with us as well. Thanks for your time, coach. All right, Jake. Thank you. Next up, men's basketball head coach Rick Wesley stops by the show. Don't go away. The Grand Valley State Sports Report continues right here on WGVU. The Grand Valley State men's basketball team used a dominant defensive effort to down Parkside 59 to 42 at the GVSU Fieldhouse Arena Friday afternoon. The Lakers had five different players scoring double figures in the contest. The team then fell 76 to 63 Saturday to the Rangers and split the weekend series as they moved to four and two on the year. Joining us right now is head coach Rick Wesley and coach we talked about that split there kind of a tale of two games from that Parkside offense in game one. Your defense was fantastic and all five of your starters scored in double figures He'd really like the balance that you saw from your team in game one yeah we really did our, our defensive effort was outstanding um you know just didn't really give them any easy opportunities it uh kind of translated into better offense for us i mean everybody was on the same page we really shared the ball pretty good uh you mentioned balanced scoring so a, a great first night you know great way to start off the weekend uh unfortunately it didn't quite carry over to the second game the offense actually was still pretty good in that second game, and Jake Van Tubergen had some nice numbers. He scored a season-high 24 points. He's the GLIAC preseason player of the year, coming off an outstanding NABC All-American season. Do you think there's some pressure that comes into that as you build up into a senior year and try to replicate what you just did so well as a junior? Well, you know, pressure, expectations, I mean, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's always there, whether you're trying to get to the point where other people are expecting you to do something or just your own self-imposed uh, expectation. There's always a certain amount of that that comes along with playing competitive athletics. So, um, 
you know, Jake's is, you know, he's doing his thing. And, you know, for the most part, the good thing about him is he's not a one dimensional guy. So even if it's a night that he's not scoring, you know, he can rebound, he can pass, he can defend. There's a lot of things he can do, but uh, you know, he, he, he did sort of get it going offensively on, on uh, Saturday, which was good to see. Um, but um, obviously we as a team just didn't play well enough. Yeah, he had six assists in the season opener, which was a career high for him. So you know he can share the basketball, do a bunch of different things in that role. You have six seniors on this team. A couple of them are transfers, but for the most part, you know, you got a very veteran leadership group. How much has that helped, especially in such a weird year, coming off of COVID, not playing until January? Well, I th certainly I think it's helpful, you know, as a coach, you always like to have veteran guys, you know, they know what's going, going on. They've been through the, uh, the challenges before there's a certain amount of trust that you've developed with those guys. So, you know, that, that certainly can be a positive. It also can be a challenge though, you know, guys, as they get later in their career, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, they, all the work that they put in all the time that they've uh, invested in it, you know, they see it coming to an end and, you know, and they want to try to, you know, do have a career in every game, you know, well, that's not really going to happen to stay in a good place and let the game come to you. Uh, sometimes it's easier when you're young, so your expectations are a little bit more realistic, but, um, but, you know, they're all high character guys. We certainly are appreciative and enjoy each one of them and hope it's going to be a strength of ours coming down the stretch. Six games in, four and two on the year. We finally get to talk to you here on this show. I know we've talked about it elsewhere, but can you talk about the emotions of just kind of getting back to basketball, getting back into the swing of things now that you get to get back on the court and get back to doing what you love? Well, it's been great. I mean, it's you know, everything's still a little strange, you know, and the show is strange. You know, we're not there together. You know, we're, we're getting tested six times a week. So we you know, leave the practice floor. We go right into, you know, COVID testing, uh, not having our family and friends here. Uh, at the games, uh, you know, all of it is strange. You know, you win a game and you, know, you don't have anybody there uh, really to celebrate with. Um, but at the same time, you know, you, you got to think back to where we were in the summer and even where we were in the fall where we didn't even know if we were going to have a season. So we're thankful for the opportunity. We know that things aren't, uh, you know, the way we'd like them to be, but we're certainly way more fortunate than a lot of people in our country. So, uh, we're trying to make the best of it, trying to have the best season we can and uh, enjoy each opportunity that we have to compete. As I mentioned, off to a really good start, but a quick turnaround here as you host Davenport on Tuesday night, then a really, really much improved Wayne State team this weekend. Of course, you know about Braylon Neely, but also you add in Darius Owens White, who has just been fantastic for them as well. Preview this weekend for us a little bit and also Davenport on Tuesday, the Crosstown Showdown. Well, you know, it, it, you get in our league. The tough, the really tough thing is that we we've had no warm up games. We've had, you know, we had one scrimmage. We we really haven't had a chance to really experiment, you know, develop our rotation, develop our bench, and boom, we're just right into conference play. And as everybody that knows that follows the GLIAC, man, the GLIAC is tough. And so everybody, you know, on the men's side is really competitive. And this week will be no exception. You know, you, you, the, you think about the the guard play this week that we're going to deal with, with Chris Rollins and Evan Hines from Davenport, you know, one of the best defenders, penetrators, scorers, and one of the best shooters for them. And then, you know, Owens White and Neely for uh, Wayne State, you know, what a combination that is. So, and, and both teams have additional quality players. So it's a tough week for us, uh, you know, five games in, in a week, basically. Um, it's going to test our depth. It's going to test test our, uh, you know, endurance and, uh, and, you know, the fact we're coming off a loss just adds uh, heightened, uh, you know, immediacy or intensity or importance to this Davenport game. Yeah, like you said, jump right into the thick of things. We're excited to see you back at home for three games this week, all of them on the Grand Valley Sports Network here on ESPN 961 as well. Coach, best of luck this week. Thanks for your time. Glad to have you back on the show. All right, thanks, and uh, hope everybody can tune in and Send us some positive energy through the uh, through the screens. We'll try to animate those cardboard cutouts for you. Next up, swimming and diving assistant coach Eric Murray will be joining us to recap the weekend. We'll be right back with more Grand Valley State Sports Report after this.
The Grand Valley State men's and women's swimming and diving teams claimed a pair of victories in the tri-meet at the Holland Aquatic Center, defeating Saginaw Valley State and Hope College. Assistant coach Eric Murray joins us now to recap the meet. And Eric, congratulations first of all to head coach Andy Boyce on having a baby daughter, Hazel. But we're glad to have you alongside with us. First of all, a couple of weekends under your belt now in the pool. How does it feel to get back in there? And I know swimming is so tough to take this long of a break, but how does it feel to be back? Oh, it feels phenomenal. It's really great to be back in competition. Uh, we even counted the days since uh, everything got canceled. It was 310 days until our last competition. So um, our athletes were ready and roaring. And even with our first meet with Finley last week, we were able to make some noise, not only in our conference, but across the nation. So we're very excited for it. Yeah, I think the last thing that happened was Michaela Karasek won a national championship in the diving, and then all of a sudden everything gets shut down. So a long time to wait but to get back into the pool. How was the team's conditioning, first of all, having to take that far off from being in the pool and getting to really train? So thankfully, over the summer, a lot of our athletes were able to find either uh, pools to swim in or to do some type of dry land type of workouts to stay in shape. And then we were able to get back in, obviously, with modifications back in um, September there. But we have had really good training. We haven't really had any issues uh, breaking up with their training at all. Um, so they've been doing really well. We even had our, our training camp a couple weeks ago where we were doing doubles each day. Um, and they've been really great since then. And our training has been going really well. So we're looking forward to seeing what this next month or two can bring for us. You had a nice little sweep of the tri meet this past weekend at the Holland Aquatic Center. You and I were talking off air how important that'll be because the GLIAC championships are at that same place in a month. I think for a layman, it might feel like every pool is probably the same. They're all the same length. They all have the same feel to them. But that's not true, right? So getting used to a pool is actually pretty important going into the GLIAC championships. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the outside of it, then, yeah, it's the same length. It's uh, the same amount of starts and, and, and everything else along those lines, too. But... Yeah, it's, it's different with every pool because each line, each black line on the bottom can be maybe a little bit different to the person's uh, view. So they got to learn how to do the correct flip turn. You got to learn how to do uh, the correct approach to the walls. Um, sometimes it, it's really just kind of even getting used to the water. Sometimes it's different water temperatures too um, and different blocks, uh, different starting blocks at each place. So no, it was very crucial to be at this Holland Aquatic Center with, uh, with our GLIAX only being about a month away. Um, I think that it was really good for our swimmers and divers uh, to get used to the blocks, the, the pool temperature, uh, the walls, the, the diving boards, which ones work for them the best. So, no, I think that it was very crucial for us this past weekend, and I think it turned out really well with the results that we were able to get too. You mentioned the abbreviated season, and I don't think people really understand how much goes into tapering and the way that swimmers really get ready for, you know, a big meet as you go to qualify, then you get ready for postseason play. How has the abbreviated season kind of changed your training schedule and your regimen? You don't have to give too much of your secrets away, but how has that kind of impacted the way you guys have planned for the next month or two? This year, obviously, we didn't uh, have a actual dual meet season in October and November there, and so with our training, we were able to do uh, some more aerobic sets, some more kick sets, just to kind of get their, um, their circulation going a little bit and really focusing on their technique as well and focusing a lot on their pace work too. Um, yeah, we, we will be starting to taper off here in a, in a couple weeks to, to get ready for our GLIACs. Um, and it'll be interesting because even with NCAAs, uh, modifications for that will be a little bit different this year too. Um, so it'll be... Um, a lot different too, because us as coaches, we love actually setting up the lineups to see what the GLIAX are going to be. And we do that based off of what the other teams have been doing. And I mean, we're not the only team that's kind of had the, uh, the abbreviated seasons. Everyone else that's in our GLIAC has as well. So it's actually going to be harder to figure out what the other teams are going to be doing um, for us to, to perform the best too. But it's a challenge that we're willing to accept and a fun one at that. We're really looking forward to some postseason swimming. We know how crazy those pools can get. Of course, we miss the atmosphere, but glad to at least have those swimmers back. And we're looking forward to a big glee axe, and then hopefully on to the NCAAs. Eric, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Of course. Thank you, guys. Joining us next is track and field head coach Jerry Baltus right here on the Grand Valley State Sports Report.
The Grand Valley State men's and women's track and field teams concluded the Mike Lintz Alumni Open this past weekend with a pair of broken school records and a handful of NCAA Division II automatic and provisional qualifications. Talking with us now to recap the meet is head coach Jerry Baltus. And coach, two meets under your belt now. You've already got some NCAA qualifiers, so off to a great start. First of all, how does it feel to get back into the Kelly and get back to co competition once again here in 2021? Yeah, certainly uh, great for our student athletes to, to have the opportunity to get out and compete after a 10 month uh, layoff and a lot of training and, and no competition. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's been great. You talk about, you know, obviously track and field. You think that'd be a sport that'd be more socially distant, maybe in more opportunities to continue the regular training regimen. How are things different or the same over these past 10 months for your student athletes? Well, I think it's a little bit of a, a mixed bag. I mean, most of our uh, events can go on and, and stay separate or distant, uh, spread out, you know, the field events, uh, it's sort of one person at a time. So no big deal there. Sprinters can spread out in lanes and whatnot. Probably the biggest challenge is our distance runners uh, who like to run in packs and, and groups. Uh, so just getting them to, to stay apart and not ride on each other's shoulder. Uh, I find myself preaching or yelling or <laughs> encouraging uh, to do the opposite of what we usually uh, encourage our, our individuals to do, whether it's to be stay spread out or, you know, at our meets, uh, normally we, we want them to stick around and support teammates. Now we're telling them that to get away from teammates and, and uh, get out of the building. So, um, you know, you just got to do the best you can with the situation we're in. And then speaking of distance runners, you know, usually you have the cross country season in the fall that kind of ramps them up for the beginning portion of the winter and they're right in their peak to kind of hit those qualifiers early. So how has this year, obviously, without ha having a cross country season been different for your distance runners and who's really stood out to you? Well, early on uh, or in the fall, we, I thought our, our student athletes did a pretty good job of, of just training at a high level. We did some time trials, inter-team time trials. We got some mock competition in and, and got that taste of things there. You know, the biggest difference, normally we have a meet in December that we try to knock some qualifiers out of the way and didn't have that. So the difference is these first meets in January, we normally don't race our, our uh, top end uh, distance runners. And, and we've done that just a, a little bit to make up for missing the December meet and then the opposite side of things, it's just not knowing where we're going to be in two or three weeks. And, you know, if, if we get a roadblock or individuals get put in quarantine, uh, we wanted to get some things done, uh, which we, we've been able to do these first couple of weeks. Obviously with a bigger team that increases the risk of some quarantine, but so far so good for your squads. And give us some names that have stood out to you both on the field and the track side for the women first off. Yeah, on the ladies' side, uh, you know, Allie Ledge picked up uh, where she uh, left off last year, uh, both weekends, getting the mile qualifier last week, 3K this week. Um, Anna Obi had a good jump uh, yesterday. Our pole vaulters uh, did a great job on Saturday, uh, first competition. Um, so, yeah, we've had some really positive things. Uh, Judas Esamaya in the, in the weight throw was awesome uh, two weeks ago. Um, Emma... Uh, Emma was great in the shot put. So we've had some really, really good things across the board. And then, of course, Nicole Serena, uh, both weeks have been outstanding. I uh, got the top, top time in the country in the, the 60, the 200, and the 400, and broke her school record uh, uh, Saturday in the 400. And then on the men's side, how about that mile run you had on Saturday? That was unbelievable. See Isaac Harding with the 403, Tanner Chada right on his shoulder. Those were two of the names that stood out to me. Who else on the men's side has really had a great week to start the year? Yeah, our distance crew has been uh, really, really strong uh, getting things going. Coach Watson's uh, really put our, our, our uh, distance runners in a great spot to, to start on, a, on, on the right foot and move forward. So, yeah, Harding's uh, time was, uh, of course, broke the school record, but Chattos was under uh, Dennis and uh school record from last year, so that was outstanding. Uh, Caleb Futter's been awesome both weekends. Uh, Connor Schwartz's been good. Uh, we've had some really, really good things from our distance squad. Uh, Justin Scabarda in the, the shot put two weeks ago was really, really good. And then this week he just focused on the weight throw. Uh, he was really, really good. So that was great to see. A couple of high jumpers have been really strong. And Ryan Mount and, and Eli Kosida uh, have been really, really good. And then our sprint crew uh, has looked uh, – uh, we've got some young kids in there that are doing a good job that coupled with uh, transfer uh, 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 Jackson from uh, Central Michigan. So uh, across the board, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, you know, Marcus Lubbers had a nice jump in the vault. So very balanced attack and feel very good about where we're at at this point in time. Well, you've had two meets at your home place. Basically, all six this winter are going to be at the Kelly Indoor. So how much does that help or how, what is the advantage to being at home basically for every meet this year? 
Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is we just control the, the variables. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about traveling. Everything about traveling just harder, you know, between eating and if you're staying overnight, uh, you know, less people on the bus, all that. And then you go to a new place and you don't, you got no idea how things are, you know, where they want you to stay or stand or camp or with the teams and whatnot. So, you know, just that, um, uh, you know, knowing the flow of things, I think will be helpful. But it also on the flip side of things, it is good to get out of your facility and experience something else. So, you know, the conference meetup at Saginaw, um, at the end of February is going to be the first time we do that. So, you know, hopefully we'll, <laughs> our, our home meets will prepare us for, uh, you know, the competition level. And then we just got to get there and deal with the, the surroundings and the environment and, and uh, be ready to compete at a high level. Well, two fun meets already. Another one coming up this Friday, the Bill Klinger. I'm looking forward to calling that one on the Grand Valley Sports Network. I know you're looking forward to getting some more teams in the Kelly. We can't wait to see you again on Friday. Thanks for your time, Coach. Congrats to a great start to the season. Thank you. We'll be right back to wrap up the show right after this. That's all the time we have this week on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. GVSU men's basketball will tip off on Tuesday at 6 p.m. as they face Davenport in the GVSU Fieldhouse Arena. They'll then take on Wayne State at home for a pair of games, the first tipping at 1 p.m. on Saturday, followed by a 3 p.m. matchup on Sunday. The women's basketball team will hit the road for three games this week, facing crosstown rival Davenport on Tuesday, followed by a pair of games against Wayne State in Detroit on Saturday and Sunday. For a complete schedule of all Laker games, as well as live broadcasts of every athletic program, visit GVSULakers.com. To see more of this show, head to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash WGVU35. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get updated video and highlights all year long. Before we go, a big shout out to all of the healthcare workers in our community and everyone who made it possible for us to return for here another year on WGVU. For the entire crew here, I'm Jake Levy. Have a great week, Laker Nation, and as always, anchor up.